You know how sometimes you just want to tell a book to fuck off? I'm actually really bad at DNFing because I have a hard time giving up on books because there's always the, the chance, the, the, the glimmer of possibility that they might get better by the end. And, and sometimes they do. Sometimes they do, but oftentimes they don't. And I really have to get better at just telling a book to fuck right the hell off when it's it's just not jiving with me. That's not to say that you can never read anything that uh, challenges you, because I think you should. You should purposefully read stuff that challenges you. But when a book is just boring or stupid or bad, like, just... Stop! Just stop reading it! So I have been getting better at this lately and I want to talk about the books that I have DNF'd since I've started to keep track of my DNFing. The first one is The Geek Feminist Revolution by Cameron Hurley. And this one, it was just, I stopped listening to it. I was listening to it on audiobook, and I stopped listening to it uh, when I realized that it just was not what I expected it to be. I thought it was going to be a list of essays like critiquing pop culture and women's placement in pop culture, but it was really more of a memoir of the author and her own work and how she has uh, carved out a niche for herself in the like sci-fi publishing industry. Which is great. That great, good, good, good for her. But the book is marketed wrong. <laughs> I have never read any of her other works. So when she wrote these in-depth essays using her works as an example, I could not connect with that at all. So I just I stopped. I stopped. I DNF'd. The next one was a little surprising for me, and that is Swing Time by Zadie Smith. And that because it's because that Zadie Smith has gotten a lot of acclaim. Uh, a lot of good ratings on her books, and I just thought that Swing Time was boring. <laughs> so it's one of those novels that opens up in like a, a in the present where something has gone terribly wrong, and then it jumps back to way back to when you know the events leading up to the thing that went wrong. But there was too much of a disconnect between those two things for me and it took too long to get to the reason why things had gotten fucked up in the beginning. It was like beginning scene was like things are fucked oh no and then it was like let's go back to the beginning and see how we got here. But there wasn't a, a good enough or a big enough hint as to what had gone wrong so I was just like waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for like, you know, the explanation to the opening scene and it wasn't coming. So I just like, forget it, forget about it. Maybe I'll try another one of Zadie Smith's books. I don't know, but this one I just found so boring. The next is The Little Paris Bookshop by Nina George. And this one seemed so promising because the opening premise was uh, surrounding a main character who ran a, a book barge, a bookstore that was in the, uh, the river Seine. That's the river in Paris, right? Yeah, <laughs> the Seine is in Paris. Uh, so he ran a bookshop on a boat in the Seine called the Literary Apothecary or something. And it, it was like uh, you would come in and treat the bookshop as a pharmacy and he would prescribe books for people's ailments. Great opening premise. But then you learn that this main character has a like a, a tragic backstory where his like lover left him with no explanation. But you realize that she did give him an explanation. She just wrote it in a letter and gave it to him and he didn't open the letter for 20 years. He just what, he just didn't know. He, he's like, she has forsaken me. I will not open the letter. I, you know, I do not owe her to pay attention to her excuses to why she left. And it's just like, I just could not. I just could not fuck with that because it's just like, you, you really, you had a letter from your significant other saying, like, a, an explanation, and you're just not gonna read it for decades, and you're gonna like carry this grudge with you for that long. So that all happens in like the first few chapters of the book that you learn that and I was just like, nah, <laughs> nah. 
Then there was Eden Lake by Jane Roper, and this one I checked out on Hoopla and I had the ebook, so I'm not sure if I just couldn't get into reading it on the iPad because I don't like electronic books. <laughs> Uh, or was it just hella boring? Or was it a combination of both? So I wanted to read a book set at a summer camp, and this one came up on a search of, like, great books set at summer camps. And it was just, like, really boring. The characters were super cringy. Like, they acted in super cringy ways. It was slow. Like, I, I got, like, mm, maybe... I got a significant way into the book, and, like, there didn't seem to be much of a plot other than like kids take over a summer camp from their parents after their parents die in a tragic accident. But it was just like, then what? So what? <laughs> so it was boring and I hate reading eBooks. So I DNF'd it. Then the most recent one is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. And that one's gotten hella hype. And everyone's excited for the sequel. So I was like, let me let me get on this train. Let me get on this hype train. And I, I started listening to the audiobook and I just did not give a shit about anything or anyone. <laughs> it was, I can't really put my finger on why I didn't drive with this book, but I just, I just, I just couldn't with it. It, it bleh. So the opening scene there is like this fairy lord shows up at this girl's house when she's like nine and kills her parents in front of her and her sisters and whisks them off to fairy because it turns out that their their mom had been married to the fairy and like fucked right off because she's a like fuck fairy <laughs> and then he's like well i must fix this because you know fairies don't like being portrayed by people so he goes and like kills her and her new husband and takes her children away back to fairy and I just felt in that opening scene and the subsequent chapters there was not enough like immediate freak out or fallout from that situation it was like, you know, they do that. That's like the first chapter. And then the next chapter is like 10 years later. And like the chick is just like, I'm part of fairy. And I have some qualms with things, but I'm, I'm not going to tell you right away. We're just going to focus on fairy stuff. <laughs> and I just, I just, I just didn't care. I didn't care about her. Uh, all the fairies were dickheads. And I mean, that's the point. But I just, I didn't want to read about that. I just didn't care. So, I DNF'd it. And then a couple of honorable mentions here. Um, I never finished Shock A Lot. I still own it because I want to come back to it and try to reread it, but I got about halfway through. Uh, but, so, I, when I picked up this book, I had watched the movie like 500 times. So I'm like, I love the book, right? Because I like the movie. Uh, but the, the movie is set in like the... 50s I think the 50s or the 60s and this was set in modern times it was a it's a contemporary and that just like really threw me off because I was trying to like imagine the movie and it's it's not it's pretty different from the movie so I might um give this a try again sometime I have not completely given up on it but you know I I didn't finish it and then technically, I never finished The NeverEnding Story because my copy of it is missing the last page. The very last page has been ripped out of this book. So I, I didn't know that until I got to the very last page. And it just, it just sort of ended. I'm pretty sure I'm missing the last page here because I can't, I can't see that this, like, this last page would be the ending so I think there is a page or two missing in this book but you know what it's fine because I, I really didn't like the second half of this book the first half is just like the movie and then the second half all the bastion goes and does all this crap and bastion's the biggest little dickhead I ever did see and I know that's the point I could, I could see the point of it, but it doesn't mean that I liked it. So when I got to the last page, and I was like, this doesn't make any damn sense for this to be the last page of the book. I was just like, 
Oh, well. <laughs> Fuck it. So there you have it. Books I've DNF'd. Have you read any of these books? Did you finish them? And what books have you DNF'd? Let me know. Down in the comments, we'll have a discussion about it. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. And until then, happy reading, nerds. And you know what? Happy DNFing, too. Because you have the power. You have the power to DNF. There, with great power comes great DNFing responsibilities. If you can't fuck with a book, then you tell it to fuck right off. Because <laughs> what are the consequences? If you're, you know, if you're not in the school, if you're just reading for fun, if you're just reading these books for fun and not for an assignment, then what the fuck are the consequences? There's no consequence. Just fuck off.